Compatriot William Freeman, will you please come forward? I'll say your let you mention your okay. Thank you. Greetings, everyone um, from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I am humbled to be here and probably taking the position of Dr. Leland Park, who faithfully attended these meetings for years uh, and when his health allowed him to. Uh, we unfortunately lost him last February, as many of y'all knew him, and his father before that, uh, Arthur Harris Park. Leland was my cousin, and Arthur was my great uncle, uh, and was the son, the real son, of Lem Lemuel Park, who uh, was on the advisory board to set up the Works Memorial, and he was the aide to Captain Works during the war. He had joined a Georgia Reserve unit out of Greenville, Georgia, and was about 15 years old when the war broke out. Uh, went from the commissary department at Andersonville, which the joke, I guess, would be they were running out of supplies, so they moved him as the adjutant to the commander. Um, and then when the war ended, uh, he spent basically the rest of his life trying to get Captain Wirtz's name cleared. Um, with the hope that maybe that movement may continue to this day, that we might see some uh, justice uh, way overdue and um, certainly not adequate for what happened to him to occur sometime in the distant future. Thank you very much for having me here. I appreciate it. And uh, we have public restrooms back here. If anybody needs to go there or whatever, I, we've forgotten to announce that. Uh, I'd like to ask Colonel Heinrich Works if he would please come to the speaker stand here. Compatriot Tom Hart from Columbus called me and uh, told me that he had planned on coming today and was going to present something to Colonel Wirtz and uh, he was unable to come. He found out at the last minute that he had to go to Arizona and so he asked me if I would make the presentation to him and I'd like to say beforehand that I consider Colonel Wirtz a very, very dear, dear friend. Uh, he and my wife and I got to know each other back 25, 30 years or so ago. And uh, every time he comes to the United States, our home is his headquarters. And uh, we just look forward to his coming. And he, he's just such a, a, a wonderful, fine fella. Uh, he knows more about Captain Henry Wirtz than anybody in the world does. And he's done all this research and documentation. And he has a book. It's been printed in German, and hopefully it's going to be translated into English uh, in this next year or so, so that we can all have a copy of it and read it. But anyway, also, Colonel Wirtz is so generous, and he has made a very large contribution financially so that we were able to have this memorial service this year. Colonel Wirtz, we greatly appreciate that also. Anyway... Tom, Tom Hart has gotten this picture of Captain Henry Words right here. And anyway, he wanted me to present it to Colonel Words, and I want to read what he had said real quickly on it. Dear Colonel Works, please accept this sketch of your ancestor as a token of my respect and admiration of this noble and admired soldier, Captain Henry Works. He captured my soul when I read of his history in service of the Confederate Army. His dedication to his family and duty as a soldier really moved me. When I saw this image of him, and very few exist of this, I was drawn to his eyes. They tell a story in themselves. These are the eyes of tenderness and mercy. I regret that I am not there for the service, but please know that you and your ancestor are part of my heart. I hope that you and your immediates have a pleasant visit here in Georgia. Finally, Tom Hart. And so, Colonel Works, I'd like, on behalf of Tom Hart and who is a member of the SCV and the MOSB there in Columbus, I want to make this presentation to you.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. Speaker. Great job. I really enjoyed that. As, a, as an educator, a school teacher, I really enjoyed that. Uh, wish I could keep you around. <laughs> and uh, Colonel Worth, it's good to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, good to see everybody out there. There's some people I've seen today that have, I haven't seen in a long time. I'd love to see your faces and some brand new people. Um, I bring greetings on behalf of our Commander in Chief, Paul Gramlin, and the General Executive Council in the uh, 30,000 plus members of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, not just here in the United States, but from Europe to Brazil, from Australia, and of course, uh, the United Kingdom. Um, it's, a, it's an honor to represent that uh, great organization that stands for the cause and fights daily um, in the trenches all around the world. We'll just let you know that we're, we're doing the best we can to do we can to always promote the truth you know, I will say that when I was commander in chief, one of my objectives was to try to figure out a way to bring a pardon to uh, uh, Captain uh, Henry Wirtz and I work with Colonel Wirtz over here and his fine young son over there, Colonel Thomas Wirtz. And David McAllister worked on the staff that we put on the Wirtz committee to try to get something done. Um, of course, it's always a, a very important time for me. This is one of my favorite events. I started coming down here in the, uh, in the 80s, only missed one service. Uh, regardless if I was commander in chief or just uh, just Kelly Barrow, just being a compatriot, uh, my second great grandfather. Uh, I'm sure some of y'all know the stories. Uh, that he was too young to, when he tried to join the Confederate Army, so he ran away after they rejected him, and he joined the Fourth Georgia Reserves. He was in Company C. They made him a, a prison guard over here in Andersonville, and he served until the end of the war. Got paroled, and he walked all the way back home to uh, Harmony Grove, which is now Commerce, Georgia. My grandmother told me, raising stories about my second great grandfather, Barry Jones Williams, that he came home covered with lice and skinny as a rail, and they had to burn his Confederate uniform. And he died, and he was buried with his uh, uh, UDC across the military service. And so it's fortunate that uh, uh, I had the ability to meet Colonel Wirtz and to have a relationship with him and his son, knowing that my ancestor was, had the honor to serve under his ancestor. And uh, I'd like to just share that, and I, I pass that along to my family and my children, which uh, James Gaskin asked me to add an addendum to this uh, greetings, because now I'm going to ask my son and daughter, who are a part of the children of the Confederacy, to come up. And my daughter, Georgiana, come on up here, sweetie. She is currently the custodian general of the children of the Confederacy. She's the chaplain of the Georgia Division Children of the Confederacy, and she's the editor of the Julia Jackson chapter number one children of the Confederacy. And my son, William, he is currently the first vice president of the Georgia Division, children of the Confederacy, and he's also the first vice president of the Julia Jackson chapter number one, uh, which is the oldest chapter of children of the Confederacy uh, in existence since 1896. And so they're bringing greetings on behalf of the Julia Jackson chapter number one. So I'll let the uh, children take over. On behalf of Julia Jackson No. 1 CFC, thank you for coming today. My brother and I have been attending the work service since birth, literally. Over the years, we have heard various speakers, but the topic is the same. Captain Wirtz was wrongly com convicted, convicted. In the U.S. government, hung a man who was guilty of, who was not guilty of anything. He became a Sorry. He, he became a scapegoat and the person, per, person penalized for all the evils of the war. Thank you for coming today to remember a man who was wrongly punished. Sorry. But to this, a family lost a husband and a father. It is an honor to be here with, with both... Um, Colonel Wurtz's and the Wat Watkins family. Thank you, Dr. Winkler, for for this informative presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Uh, 
appreciate tell you how much I appreciate you coming today. Uh, we've got a super crowd, and y'all did a fantastic job as, as you've been doing for so many years. Um, we got a beautiful day today, and uh, I think this is one of the biggest crowds I've yeah. seen in years. And uh, I want to thank some people that do so much. The Muckley Guards, you've been doing this for years, and you do other events. I, I certainly appreciate it. Robert Coleman with the Anderson Artillery. Uh, we thank you for coming, and uh, you're going to put on a show for us in a little while. We appreciate you coming. And I love your artillery officer's uniform, too. I need to get one, too. <laughs> so thank you. Um, Southern Sounds is not here today, but I had a great picture of them from last year. And uh, is Ken Arvin still around? Or Bonnie? Well, I've got, I've got a picture I'll show you. I think that's a wonderful picture of them from last year. So I'm going to give that to them. And as I said earlier, um, any Sunday in Georgia is good when Georgia football team wins. And, and the next door neighbor loses. We'll get in trouble for that. <laughs> but um, anyway, we certainly appreciate what y'all do. And... Um, <laughs> James, I thought you said John Carroll was coming here today. John, what? Oh, he's camouflaged this year. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't recognize. <laughs> well, seriously, John Carroll and James Gaston are two of my favorite people, and they, they work so hard for our cause all year long, and they've done it for so many years. And... Uh, I've been trying to get them to make into my event for years. I can't get them. I just, I just can't get them to come up. I don't, I don't know what's wrong. Last year, I gave them a filet mignon, and y'all, that didn't even work. A filet mignon didn't even work. So, John, uh, would, yeah, two of them. Two of them didn't even work. So, John, would you stand up? I'm trying to figure out what I did wrong. I know what it is. He's too big. That little fillet didn't make it. <laughs> All right, this, I don't know if y'all know it, but I used to own a, a, a seafood and beef company. This is a special steak that I made myself. It's a cut down New York strip, so you can call it the Marbella. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for you. And James, I got one for you. Come on up here. <laughs> And Kelly, I just found out last night you were coming, and you've done so much for our cause, you're going to get one. I wish I could give one to everybody. Okay. Yes, sir. We appreciate what you've done. Now, the bad news for you guys is you got to share it with your wife and children and family. Okay? <laughs> All right. Thank you all for what you do. Thank you for what you do. Y'all are the ones that should be trying. No, no. Um, now for a more serious part, uh, what I try to do every time I come to um, this event is um, try to thank uh, our veterans and, and all the ladies that come to this event. So when the ceremony up here is finished, I've got roses for every lady that attends, and then I've got lapel pins for the veterans, and frankly, I think I got one for all the men that came this year. And if I might add one more thing real quick, um, we had some legislation regarding monuments that we passed this summer, the legislature, and uh, one of those gentlemen that I worked with this summer is here, Mike Kiokas, and he's in the same office with a good friend of mine, Dale Washburn, another representative, and it's not fun work, there's a lot of controversy, and they worked real hard on that, and I appreciate what you did. If you stand up. Thank you. And that's it for me. All right, thank you.